guys in the fast lane here. Does your vehicle make a knocking noise and you just can't figure out where it's coming from? It doesn't sound like it's coming from the bottom of the block or the head, but you still can't find out where it is? Well, here's where your problem is, most likely. Now, I'm going to go in the vehicle and start the engine, and you'll hear the knocking noise I was just describing. <laughs> Just gonna wait for that cooling fan to slow down. So this knocking noise is actually coming from the runner flaps inside the intake manifold. Now it really sounds like you got a bent rod or you spun a bearing, but I can promise you that's not what's happening. So I'm sure you're hearing the chattering right now. As soon as I pull this vacuum line, it's gonna go away. See how quiet it is now? Now this is either a runner flap problem where they're chattering in between and a runner flap is like a butterfly. The throttle opens and closes, that's what's inside here. Each one has a little butterfly in there. And there's a solenoid down here that runs off this vacuum line. And sometimes those go bad, but the chattering nine times out of 10 is your, your runner flaps are getting loose. So it was quiet. I just took it for a run around the block and it started off nice and quick and then all of a sudden halfway through the run I could feel it starting to pull back again and sure enough the noise came right back. So you can hear it chattering again. Those flaps are going back and forth and they're restricting airflow. We're going to remove the entire intake manifold and delete the runner flaps and I'm going to show you how to do that. We have two Phillips for the throttle body cover. Just going to take those out. Now that the throttle body cover is off, you're just going to take either a flathead screwdriver or a 5 16th socket. I'm going to use 5 16th and just loosen up the circle clamp. Then you're going to grab it and you're going to pull it. Well, this one's really suctioned on there. Good. And if you can't get it off quite yet, just pull on the top to break the seal. Unfortunately, in order to remove the throttle cable, you have to actually take the throttle body off. So you got four 5 16 bolts. Just remove those. Now once you remove those, you'll be able to spin the throttle body around and it should come right off. So just take your throttle body like this, turn it forward until this little knob piece pops out of the actual um, throttle cable. Just take a pair of needle nose pliers and we're gonna push in on these little tabs right here so we can push the throttle cable back in. There we go. Let's pull it all the way through and set that aside. For the EGR pipe, we're gonna just use a 12 and a 10 millimeter. Now yours is more than likely just going to be a 10 millimeter. Um, I had to put a 12 in here because I didn't have a 10 at the time when I was reassembling it. Also what's nice to have is sometimes you can't get to that bolt and I use this swivel uh, extension. It actually has a cutout rivet so when you lock in it's straight then you pull out just a hair and it has a swivel action. They're made by Ampro. I haven't seen them at uh, Advanced Auto anymore, but when they were there, they were really nice. So as you can see, it's doing that nice swivel action. So we're just going to take these two bolts off and pull the EGR pipe out. Now that the EGR pipe's out, just kind of leave it right there. almost forgot to mention, you got one more vacuum hose right here on the front. We're just going to take that off. So next we're going to unclip the main harness right here, the main wiring harness that clips together. Let me zoom in. I left it out so that you guys could see the location of it. So here it is right here. And you can see right here it's just a little clip so we're going to take like a flat head or push on the back side of it and pull up. Now I got a Phillips. I might be able to get away with this without using anything else. But you're going to push in and up. There we go. And you just want to take it off that bracket because that's attached to the intake manifold. Now that that's off, just right here, you can probably barely see it, but I showed earlier in the video, it's the vacuum hose that goes to the intake manifold. 
it controls the runner flaps or the swirl flaps. Just take that off. Um, there's one bolt right here on the back side for the runner solenoid. It's just a, it looks like a, maybe a 5 16th. Gonna undo that. We have a few more things. We're just gonna unhook this vacuum line right here, kind of pull it through and set that aside. Um, there's another vacuum line right on the inside of the intake manifold. It's right here, straight down. That runs off of the uh, fuel pressure regulator. So we're gonna pull that hose off. And man, let me tell you something, that was on there. So that would probably be the first thing I would put back on, just because it's, uh, it's really tight. Okay, so that's done. Now we gotta go to the back side again. And it's gonna be hard with the camera kinda in my way, but we got a little grommet right here attaching the wiring harness to the intake. And push that aside and on the back you actually have the um, if I can remember I think it's the the swirl flap controller in the back here you barely see it but it's got a plug and you're gonna take the plug out maybe I'll give you a better visual just so you can see what you're really taking apart here's the swivel flap control right here we're just gonna unplug this one right here in the back there's a vacuum line in the back of it too so take that off now we have one more crazy bolt it's a 5 16th and this is why I make a lot of these videos uh, there's a lot of people out there that do know how to take this stuff apart and they're real handy and that's awesome but sometimes there's those sneaky little bolts that you're just wondering why that part won't come off and you think to yourself I've had all the bolts out what's going on here and this is why so right here it's connected to the EGR pipe right in the back. It's a sneaky little guy. And you just gotta take that out. It holds the EGR pipe to the intake manifold. And it's kinda covered. The wires usually run over here, so you really can't see it. So make sure you take that one out. Okay, so last step is removing the intake manifold bolts. Now you can probably see one in the camera in this video right here. Um, when I take this off, I'm gonna let you know how many bolts there are. I really don't know off the top of my head. The bolt size for the intake manifold are 10 millimeter. So believe it or not, it was only five bolts, five 10 millimeter bolts. The hardest one to really get to is the one in the very, very back. I'm gonna show you the whole layout where all the bolts go when I pull it off so you'll be able to get a better idea. Pretty much I got them all off. Just make sure everything's out of the way. All right, I'm gonna remove this bracket because it is kind of hitting right there and then the thing should come right out. The bracket's removed, get this last bolt right here. You don't gotta worry about the bolt size, they're all the same length. And just set the bracket kinda in the same position that it was if you can't remember which way it went. And lift the whole unit up and that's it. So here's the bolt pattern. This is the back side. You got one here, one here, 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 and here. So two, four, five bolts. And these are the flaps I was talking about. These flaps right here are the swirl flaps, and here's the swirl flap control. Now, what's happening is they're going, they're chattering like that, you know, and you're having a problem. So I'm going to eliminate all four of these. Just get rid of them. On my Turbo GSR, I eliminated them, and it ran a lot better. We're going to take a T25 torx head and we're going to take off the uh, swirl valve controller and there's one two three screws so you just remove those you're just going to pull straight out and let's see here kind of yeah just pull out and as you can see there's a little uh, square for the actual rod that goes all the way through the swirl flaps so we're going to set this aside And if you know, you can't really get the swirl flaps out through the rod, but here's what they do. They open and close, and when they're chattering like this, that's what you're hearing inside the intake. And if one of these breaks off inside the intake manifold, that's it. It's over. You're uh, pretty much in big trouble. It'll get down in the piston, 
smash up into the valve and your whole entire engine will blow up. I've actually seen a video of a guy that was supposed to change his out because they were chattering and he had a BMW. He had the metal ones and one of them broke off and blew his entire engine up. So that could be a hefty. So I would eliminate them. It's ridiculous that they even put these things in here. I mean, as if the intake manifold can't provide enough airflow itself. Now the goal is to grab onto this long square rod right here and somehow break it off or pull it out. Um, if you run into a problem, you can actually bust off the swirl flaps inside there. Now once we take these swirl flaps off, we can't just slap it back on though. We have to patch up each hole that leads to the other cylinder. I'm going to get a hammer and kind of smack it out. A quick tip would be not to hit it right here. I barely tapped it and it started coming out and it shattered the part where it bolts to the actual head. So I'm going to have to JB weld that up really good and let's hope it holds. I sure hope so because I don't want to have to replace this. But this is probably one of the cheapest pieces of junk manifold. I mean it's just so brittle. They just throw them in a mold and use real cheap plastic. So you can imagine if I barely tap that and this swirl flap is made of the same plastic. Could you imagine that just a little piece like that got in your engine? I just took out the rod. As you can see I just put it on there and kind of tapped it. Here's the swivel flaps. Now these should come right out and if they don't, I believe there's a whole piece right here locking them in. This whole plate right here. So off the top of my head I'm just gonna kind of put this in here. See if I can't pop them out. Yeah look, see I mean they just, could you imagine if that broke off inside your intake? Man, it'd be good night. And definitely make sure you clean this out really well because you don't want any of this getting inside there. So that one, there's still some pieces in there. This piece right here on the outside, it looks like it wants to separate. I don't know, we'll see. I'm just going to break them off. Oh, there we go. See how this piece just broke right off? Look at this. It's just pathetic. But that's all gonna have to go in there. I'm probably gonna JB weld all this shut, real clean it up. It's pretty sad though that they built it like this. They really built it to fall apart. So here's the swivel flap mechanism. And I guess, I mean these things, look at that. I just snapped it in half by uh, pulling it. So let's see here. Since I got a cracked off main bolt right here that holds the intake to the actual head, I'm going to go to AutoZone or Advance and I'm going to get some high temp epoxy. Um, there's this epoxy that holds up to 3500 PSI. It bonds plastic to plastic and it does uh, plastic to metal also. For these plastic parts right here, I'm just putting them in the ultrasonic cleaner, a little jewelry cleaner, and let them, you know, kind of clean up all the bad junk. It's starting to come off. You can see some of the stuff bubbling at the top. I'm just going to put all the little parts in here that I'm going to be putting back. I bought some just uh, gunk, some brake parts cleaner, and we're going to spray the inside of these cylinders so that it'll be really clean for the uh, epoxy I bought, and I'll show you that in a minute. Shake it up, and I'm gonna spray it really good, see if I can get all of, I'm not gonna spray it crazy, I'm gonna fill it up a little bit, and then get my wire brush, and scrub out as much as I can, because these cylinders get gunked up really, really bad. I have all my pieces cleaned up with a wire brush, really clean. The inside here is really clean, just right in here. The, all the way back I didn't really get too much, but right where the pieces are going to set in there, they're really cleaned up. So what I'm going to be using is a product called uh, VersaChem. It's a plastic welder, dries in 15 minutes, has 3500 PSI, it bonds to uh, ABS, acrylic, ceramic, china, fiberglass, glass, most metals, most reinforced plastics, PVC, 
stainless steel, steel, um, styrene, vinyl, and wood. Pretty much it comes with a little mixer right here. I'm going to open it up and we're going to use this to set and fill the holes. So you just hold on to the little packaging, kind of set that down. And you break off the two tabs and you squeeze it and I believe, I thought it came with a little mixer. I guess you just use the little flap they give you right here. Or actually I take it back in the middle. I guess there's a little mixer prong you take off. But whatever. I guess when you squeeze it, it pops out. So pretty much if it dries in 15 minutes, I got to get organized. So over here I got them all laid out. On the last one, this little piece broke off at the top. I'm not going to put that back in just because it's such a small piece. If that does fall in there, it'll bend a valve. So I really don't even want to install these back. But the only way to keep that gasket in there is to have this because it's a two-piece thing. So I'm going to permanently put these pieces in there as just to hold the... Uh, gasket in but they also make a nice incline right here if you look right here you can see how it the air would hit that and it wouldn't be smooth flowing so just a poor design so I just squirted it in there I'm just gonna mix it up real good I'm gonna take the first one here and just kinda paste it on the outside Hopefully stuff don't dry crazy on my fingers. <laughs> and then I'm going to piece it on the top. And I'm going to do this to all of them. So I'm just going to show you this one right here so you can get an idea. And then the rest is going to be off camera. But try to keep it away from the front because that's where it mounts. So now that that's in there, just kind of line it up. This stuff's drying already. And push down really good. Now you're going to want to get it all out of the crevice right here. So make sure you do that. Alright, so after a lot of scrubbing with the wire brush, after I applied the epoxy, scrubbed the inside to smooth it out, you know, get as many burrs as I could out. Um, I'll probably work on it just a little bit more. You don't want anything in the intake. And then I'll probably hose it off and then blow dry it to clean it up. So pretty much here's what it looks like as you can see down in there. It's all smooth. It looks a little rustic because the epoxy as I was rubbing it in kind of, uh, you know, got on it. I wouldn't take any sandpaper and sand it because if you get sand in the intake manifold and you can't get every last drop of it out, you're in big trouble because it'll get inside your uh, cylinder and scratch up your cylinder walls and then it'll ruin your piston rings and you'll start getting oil blow by and you'll be burning oil out the exhaust. So I don't suggest using any kind of abrasive. Now this wire brush, yes, one of them could come off, but the chances of that is very unlikely, and I'm going to clean it out very thorough. So, pretty much, this is what I'm looking at. You can see in here I epoxied every hole on the other side because the rod went through there. And let me tell you, this stuff is rock hard. Look at it, it's all over my fingers, and when you peel it off, it feels like it's going to take your skin with it. But I don't suggest doing it barehanded. Um, I kind of didn't have a choice once I started it. This stuff started drying within like 10 minutes. They say 15, but man, this stuff dries so quick. That's why I couldn't really catch it all on video because I would have went through two tubes. For the swirl valve vacuum little mechanism here, I'm not going to put this piece back in because this is what went in there. Um, I sealed it up, so I'm going to take it completely off and just lift up and pop it out of it. It's going to think that it's moving in and out, which I don't care. It can do whatever it wants up and down. It's not going to control the flaps anymore. So I'm just going to mount it the way that it was supposed to be mounted, just like that. It's already sealed up, so I don't got to worry about it. I'm going to put the three screws back in, and then that's pretty much it for that job. The other end of this intake manifold was already sealed up to begin with, so there was no need to uh, do any other modification. The only reason why I've bothered to put this back at all is just so that I don't get any check engine lights so I can plug the clip in. Um, other than that, I wouldn't put it back on. Hopefully I don't get any check engine lights. Hopefully it doesn't pick up on any uh, kind of airflow up in this area. We'll see. I'll ride it around for a little bit and I'll comment in the about me section. As for this broken piece right here, it's a shame it happened, but uh, 
nothing I can do about it. I'm going to put it back together with this 3200 PSI epoxy well, the same stuff I use for the uh, flaps. So I'm going to check this piece out and make sure I get it in the right way. Okay, it looks like that. I'm going to put this in there like that. All right. So mix up some of this epoxy. All right, there's that. Now I got to put a little more on the outside right here. Stuff is really messy, guys. I'm I'm just letting you know. All right. And once this stuff dries, man, is it tough. Just taking some blue Permatech RTV and I'm just going to line it up on the bottom of this gasket. Reconfigured in there. So I'm just going to lay this in there. I'm going to do this to all of them. And as you can see right here, it's kind of wanting to go in. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of the um, plastic weld right in here. All right, guys, day two. As you can see right here, I added some of the plastic weld where it cracked. So try not to do that <laughs> like I did. It was kind of hard though to get that rod out without tapping the actual body to pull it out. I mean, even if you wedge something in there and pull, you, you're pressing on it. So um, just be careful. Uh, another thing I would say tip wise because this is my first time eliminating on this particular plastic intake I've done it on the GSRs the Acura Integras I've removed the butterflies but you don't have to actually take out an assembly it's just a centerpiece that you can remove um, as for these little couplings that go back in after you remove the the runners or the butterflies I would be careful taking them out. Mine were really stuck in there, so they snapped in the middle right here. Um, if you can get them a whole piece, it'll save you a lot of trouble. Like I got this one whole, and it was just one nice, you know, put the plastic well around it, slide it in, and then fill the holes up. So that would be a tip I would give you. Uh, like I said, it's been, it's the next day. Hasn't quite been 24 hours, but I hit it with a blow dryer to speed up the process. I just put this on today actually on either side it was already you know welded from the inside out but I put extra in it I hit it with a blow dryer and it's already rock hard uh, they say 200 degrees this stuff can take up to but I think it takes higher than that I had the blow dryer blowing at about 350 degrees like right on it and uh, it didn't do nothing to it maybe for long long periods of time but you're not gonna have to worry about it intake manifold doesn't really reach 200 degrees I mean maybe on a hot hot day but I think this stuff will do it was the highest uh, rated stuff I could find so that's pretty much all I could do as for your little ports here just make sure they're all sealed up and you don't have any kind of you know leaks and holes because you don't want to transfer you know air from this cylinder to the other cylinder so other than that it's time to put it in. So get yourself like a step stool or something with these trucks a little higher up, kind of hard to get to. So first thing we're going to do is just make sure everything's cleared out of the way. Just like that. And it looks good. The only tricky part is getting the EGR pipe out of the way. So just move everything out of the way. It's a real pain in the butt though. It is super tight. Kind of go at an angle. A little at a time. Oh man. And it's usually the back wires right here that play into uh giving you a hard time there we go and man I'll tell you what from the other day 
I bruised the top of my knuckle and whew, just bumped it and you know how that feels, bruising the bone. All right, so we got that in there and we're going to get one started. So we're gonna take our bolt and I'm just gonna get one in the intake manifold just to get it lined up. And the next thing I would put in is the fuel pressure regulator hose, the vacuum line. I would just put that in on the intake just so you don't forget. Other than that, we're gonna put in the EGR pipe. Now to do this, we gotta put our gasket back on. So we got our gasket. I'm just gonna slide it over and I'm actually gonna put it into the intake manifold. There we go. And then just kind of line it up. And we got, uh, there's supposed to be two 10 millimeters. We'll put those back in. Uh, hook up all your vacuum lines, just plug them all back in. And then um, that's pretty much it. Just plug in your uh, your little vacuum swivel, the runner flap controller. And then you got your little runner vacuum right here. And you're gonna plug that back in, just the vacuum lines. And it's pretty much self-explanatory. Just plug in your sensors your intake manifold throttle body back on. To put the cable back on, you gotta put it on first. Your throttle cable, you gotta put it on the throttle body first and then put the throttle body on. Don't put the throttle body in and then try to get it on there because it won't work. And before you do that, make sure you slide it through the intake. So I'm just gonna tidy this up. Uh, another thing, you don't forget to put your bracket back on like that with the two ten, three 10 millimeters back in there. And that's pretty much it. But this this uh, deletion of the runner flaps or the swirl flaps, there's all kinds of names for them, or butterflies. This applies to pretty much all vehicles out there. BMWs, like I said earlier, have a really, really bad problem with this. And they don't take it back to the manufacturer and there is no coverage. And I've heard of dozens of BMWs blowing up. So we got pretty much everything hooked up, you know, all the bolts in the intake manifold, all the vacuum hoses, just got to plug in the clips. You really can't put them wrong because they only go to one clip. Um, don't forget this vacuum hose that goes under and then plugs in on this side. You got your two vacuums in the back and you got your solenoid, your uh, runner solenoid on the side with the two vacuum lines. So you're hooking everything up the same way you took it apart. The only thing we did is change the guts inside the intake manifold. Uh, for this, I'll show you how to put the throttle body on. You gotta leave it loose. You're gonna slide it through the intake manifold. Then you're gonna put it on here first. Just kind of push down. Did you see that? Just push down on it and that's it. See, it, you couldn't get it on the other way. It's gotta be flat. So, got that. Another thing to keep in mind is the idle adjustment screw right here. It's a 5 16th bolt so we might have to adjust that because I was hearing uh, when the flaps get stuck open so that's what they are right now they're not even there so it's wide open it chokes it doesn't I guess maybe doesn't have enough fuel at idle so we might have to adjust this to get the idle right so all we do is just put it back up and we put our four um, 10 millimeter or actually 5 16 bolts in Everything's hooked up and we're ready to start it. So this is the first start. I haven't even started it off camera. So let's see what we got. Sounds like a really nice running motor. No more clanking and ticking. Give it a little rev. We don't even have to adjust the uh, idle screw. Woo, I think. That thing's really revving way faster than it ever did. So there you guys go. Inside with the gauges, you can see my RPMs are really nice. They're the exact same as they were at idle. 
so I didn't have to adjust anything. Um, you can see the engine's heating up a little bit. Obviously, it's going to go to the middle, but just shows that I drove it around for a little bit. I actually drove it around the block a couple times. Um, other than that, no check engine lights. The thing really uh, goes a lot faster up in RPMs. I noticed when I was in fifth gear before, it would just kind of be sluggish. I, like you. You want to barely be able to press the pedal and feel like you're accelerating somewhat and I never did with the flaps in but now that I push it I feel as I'm letting off it's still pulling a little bit so I can I actually don't have to push the pedal down as far hope you guys enjoyed this video go ahead comment like and subscribe also don't forget to check out my Facebook page website and Android app all that can be found on my YouTube channel in the about me section I'm in the fast lane and I'll see you guys next time